One of the problems that I've run into over the years with my experience out in the field especially, um, but even in, in quotations where I work now, you know, we get people that they want to design around the size of a basin, and that's just not the way it works. You need to go to the other, we need to figure out what the pump is, we need to figure out, you know, how many gallons can that pump pump, we need to figure out uh, how much extra space, where the inlet comes in, for example. Everything above the inlet pipe is wasted space. So if the inlet pipe is coming in way down low, we're going to have to have a basin that's big enough to, to give us a good working volume. Um, I always tell people if there's ever extra money to spend, spend it on a, on a basin. Get a bigger basin. You can't ever go wrong with a basin that's a little bit too big. Um, if you get one that's undersized, then we run into all kinds of problems, and unfortunately there is not a good fix for that. If you run into where a pump short cycling, the the basins down in the concrete floor inside the office building, um, you just may not have much in the way of choices. They may just have to live with the pump's going to burn up in a couple of years, and that's the only choice there is. So we're going to look at some basin sizing to try to help with that. So with a basin, like I said, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to pick a pump. I had an engineer last week tell me that he wanted a, a 48 by 96 basin. That's what he wanted. And then the pumps he picked, they were huge pumps. They were going to pump that basin out in no time. It was just like, this doesn't work. We're going to be short cycling the pumps. We've got to go with a bigger basin. So the first thing is determine is what size pump. What is that flow rate going to be? What's the design point? Which pump are we going to put in this application? So we've got to determine the flow rate so we know how much storage we have. We need to know the dimensions of the pump. That's something that when you start doing rail systems and that sort of thing, knowing how much room does that require. If you get something that you think, oh yeah, that'll work, but then you put it on a rail system and you find out the pump won't fit through the cover or through the hatch, it becomes a big problem. Um, the different discharge options. You know, we have some of these, like the big ZEP pumps over here, for example. We have different discharge. Uh, we have some that have horizontal flanges. We have some that are vertical. Um, obviously, with the horizontal flange, it kind of pushes the pump back a little further. So that is all important to take into consideration. Um, we need to know if it's going to be a simplex or a duplex system. Are they going to use a rail system? We're going to have to figure out where the discharge is going. Typically, if it's an outdoor system, the discharge is going to go out through the sidewall of the basin and out underground. Typically, they want to keep that below whatever the frost depth is in your particular area. If it's inside of a building, you know, maybe this is in a big office building or an arena or something, typically the discharge and the vent will come through the cover. So we got to make sure we figure that up. And then the, I think one of the most important things is where is that inlet going to come into the basin? Um, most of our larger package systems, the hub for the inlet is shipped loose and they field install it just because you can imagine how hard it would try to be to get a basin set and get it just right so that the pipe came in right to where we had the hole drilled. So typically they field install those. So again, if they drill it right up near the top or if they drill it down near the bottom can make a drastic difference on how much working volume we have in that basin. And then as a good rule of thumb, we like to say that we want to keep at least 24 inches of water in the bottom of that pit. We don't want that pump to ever get to the point where it's, it's sucking air. We want to keep the water up on it such that it can never get to the point where the pump is drawing air. So we use 24 inches as just a reference, as a good rule of thumb. I always tell people, in a perfect world, um, when I was doing installs and so forth, what I would try to do if I had a basin that was deep enough, I'd try to keep the pump completely submerged. If you can keep it completely submerged, then you eliminate air or oxygen. Um, the pump won't rust. You know, it's, it's down there in that enclosed environment, if you will. It might get black, it might get dirty, but it, when you pull it out and hose it off, you're probably still going to be able to read the tags on it just fine. Um, it's going to look, you know, relatively okay, typically if you keep it completely submerged. So, but again, that's something you just got to look at and decide how much room do you have? Do you have enough working volume where you're still going to have a good run time and so forth? So again, as we work through this, hopefully that will 
will provide us a design such that, that we could do that.